Hi, I'm Kai and today I want to show you how you can create macros out of your macro project. In my last video I already showed you how you can create a macro project. If you haven't seen this video, I placed the link below in the video description. And in this video we will use macros out of our macro project, have a look how we can manage it and how we can update automatically the macros in our normal projects. How we can create devices with our macros and use them in our daily tasks. So stay tuned. <clears throat> I told you already in the last video that you need to focus on the structure of your macro project. You need to think about how you structure your macros to manage them. And now we want to add a new macro to our macro project. So therefore we go to our page navigator and insert a new page. And now we need to think about how we structure this. In my example, I want to add a power supply from Phoenix Contact, a Quint Power 4. And that means here for the full page name, I go to the More button, keep here the electrical, add here for example Phoenix Contact, and this should be a power supply. They have different one, Quint or Trio or some others. And maybe the document type will be that it's a three phase. And maybe 24 volt. So the page name will be one. And we click OK. In the next step, we will change the main the page description. And click OK. Here we need to change the structure because I use wrong characters. So we make it with underline. Now we click OK and OK and have now a new page here in our macro project for our power supply. In the next step, we need to add a macro box. And therefore we go to the tab master data, go here to the macro section and click here below navigator and insert macro box. And now we just make it a little bit bigger and have insert the macro box. And now we can start to create our macro here within the macro box. So the most things you can find under insert, for example, you can insert the graphics, and maybe you should start with a black box. Give a device tag and so on. And yeah, use the graphics, whatever you want. And maybe the device connection points. But maybe you have already several projects and you want to start now with your macro project. You can also go to your project. And if you have maybe something already finished, you can just copy this and paste it in your macro box. So I delete the unnecessary things. And now you should think about if maybe this macro can be also used for other versions of this power supply. As an example, you have here, for example, the 20 amp power supply of the Quint 4. But there is maybe also a 10, 15 or 40 amp version. That means it makes no sense to insert technical data directly here as a text. It is better to use this from the parts management. And this is something I show you later. So what I'm doing here now is that I, for example, delete the part number because we want to have it more flexible later on and also the technical characteristics. So now this is a neutral macro, what we can use for different versions. Now we make a double click on our macro box and give a name for our macro. And therefore we click here on the folder and select here in our data, macros and company name, maybe a folder which belongs to the manufacturer. 
And here we can save, for example, our macro. under a certain name. And because we have done this macro on the multi-lane page, this, the representation type is automatically multi-line and the variant is A. If you want to have various variants from this macro, you can also do this from A to Z. You can make enter a description and here on the top, you can also select the type of usage. You can set it to defining, referencing, subordinating, but are not specified. We keep it on defining and everything else, we keep it as it is. Now we click apply and okay. And now we go to the tab master data, to the command group macros and go to generate automatically. When we click here, we will see the source of our macro and we can here activate the checkbox for override existing macro and click OK. And now we go to our project, our real project. And here we will have a look on some settings. So therefore we go to file and settings, go to our project, graphical editing, general, and here we activate the checkbox for also insert macro box. In my case, it's already activated. So we click OK. And now we want to insert our macro here on this page as well. So we go to our insert, insert center and for example, search for Quint. And under window macro, simple macro, we can find our macro. Now we can place it on our page and click here on number and have placed our macro, including our macro box. And now, now maybe we see something is wrong here or we want to add something on our macro. And then we go back to our macro project and change something on our macro. I just, I just enter for example now, uh, circle. This just should show you how it works. And now I go to the tab master data and generate automatically. Override existing macro is activated. I click OK. And when I now go back to my project and make here a right click on my macro box and click update macro, you can see that I have now here also the circle. So this is one big advantage when you manage your ma macros within a macro project. Then you can always update your macros in your real life projects automatically very easily. So and in the next step, we go now to our parts management and search for example, for our Quint power supply. And here you can see that this is the 20 amp version. And we can go to the tab properties. And be behind the schematic macro, here's the one from the data portal. We can change now to our macro, what we have created within our macro project. So now we click apply and close it. Click yes. So we need to update our project database. And when we go now to our insert center and search for our Quint, we have also two devices. And this is the one we have modified with our macro from our macro project. And when we insert now our device here on our page, we have exactly our macro from our macro project. And what you can see now is that it automatically shows the technical characteristics and the part number because when we go back to our macro, this is already set it on the tab display. We have here, for example, the technical characteristics, which comes out of our parts management and also the type designation of part.
So, and in case if you need now the 40 amp version, you just can add this to the parts management, add the technical data and the part number and so on, use the same macro and then you will have here the 40 amp version. Thanks for watching this video. If you have further questions, please leave a comment below this video. Drop a like if you enjoyed and don't forget to subscribe and activate the notifications. Hope to see you in the next video, which I recommend you on the right side. Grow your e-blend skills.